we're looking at our unit on multiplying with fractions. Now you may realize the procedure for multiplying with fractions is pretty easy. You simply multiply across. But the understanding of multiplying with fractions, why that's much more challenging. Let's see how we approach this very high stakes, challenging topic. We begin by establishing the important relationship between multiplying with fractions and multiplying with whole numbers and we ground the instruction in story problems or contexts. Mirabelle made two pots of coffee. Each pot made eight cups. How many cups of coffee did Mirabelle make? We have students analyze and paraphrase the story problem. What's the multiplier? What's the starting value? And what are the units? We have two groups of eight cups of coffee. We teach children how to use a double number line to do the calculation with the whole numbers. Here's the eight cups of coffee and we're going to make two groups showing 16 cups of coffee. Students are grounding their experience in the paraphrasing, the models, the answer, and the units, what the answer represents. So now when they move to the more abstract area of multiplying with fractions, why, it's not quite as abstract as it may have otherwise been. Marco turned in a one-half page writing assignment. The teacher told him it had to be six times longer. How many pages did his teacher want the writing assignment to be? Six groups of one-half pages. He makes the one-half page, he makes the six groups, and now we can see the whole number answer. Six halves are three pages. As students move beyond the double number line, we introduce a second manipulative. We introduce the area model. Here we have a problem about acres of land, very appropriate for an area model. Six groups of one-third acre. Here we see the one-third acre, and the student makes six groups. By reorganizing, they can see that the six groups of one-third, they're actually two acres. And so now this multiplication that involves fractions becomes much more concrete. By the time the student is done with their first week of study in this very difficult area, it's clear to them and easy. And that is, they're now able to do their work with the equation. Three times two-thirds. The context, the paraphrase, the model, and the equation are all related. In their second week, students move from groups of problems to parts of problems. They're still multiplying fractions, but this distinction is important. Mrs. Jays had 20 students that ordered milk. One-fourth of the students ordered strawberry milk. That's one-fourth part of 20 students. Make this 20 students, find the one-fourth part, and the mathematics follows similarly with three-fifths parts of 15 students. Eventually, in that second week, students learn to choose a paraphrase. It is, a, is it a groups of problem or a parts of problem? And then they solve those problems after doing that, after making that determination. In the third week of study, students begin multiplying fraction times fraction. Here's an example where they're multiplying two-thirds times four-fifths, still set in the context. Let's see how we model this. Students begin by making their four-fifths. They need to find two-thirds part, and so they create the two-thirds part and bring it over here. And they can see visually that the answer is eight-fifteenths. And now we can start to see the relationship between multiplying across the visual models, the conclusion, and even the units. It all comes together for these students. Sometimes the answer in a fraction times fraction problem is larger than the starting value. One and a half groups of one and three eighths pounds of clay, it's going to be two and one sixteenth pounds of clay. So things that were very abstract before are becoming very clear and concrete to students now. In the fourth week of study, students are applying what they've learned. They apply it to multiplication problems without contexts and multiplication problems with contexts. In each case, the models are withdrawn. They've got to do the work on their own. So they've come to the end of a month of study and they understand deeply what it means to multiply fractions. Now, all along the way, they've had some assistance with investigations. The unitizing grid is a great aid in multiplying fractions. If this is one, 
Why this green? This will be one and three quarters. It becomes very clear and concrete. And the unit of study culminates with a real world investigation. And this is a real, real world investigation. It's on a sports complex. Students design their own sports complex. So they have 20 acres of land. Do they want to have a soccer field, a football field, a baseball field? And if so, how many? Accurate attributions are given for the, the acreage of each of these fields. A soccer field is around two acres. A football field is around an acre and a half. And the students are going to make their determination of how many they want to build. They're going to multiply with fractions. And they're going to see what the total acreage is and design their own sports complex. So in our unit of study on multiplying fractions, students see the connection between multiplying with whole numbers and multiplying with fractions. They see how story problems and paraphrases and models and equations all relate. And they see how this multiplication of fractions relates to their real life.